point karate gloves when you first put them on there's like a thought that like yeah this is going to be perfect for training every aspect of self-defense that i have a floating thumb so i can make a fist my fingers are free so i can grapple but that is only an illusion the art of fighting without fighting show me some of it Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis and in today's video I am going to be ranking the various kinds of gloves you could buy for sparring. If you are new to my channel, be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and click the bell so that you can be notified whenever I release a new video. It has been made very clear to me by my subscribers that they much prefer the more long form videos, especially the tier list videos that I make. Now, it would be impossible for me to make every video a tier list video just because I would run out of things to talk about really quickly. However, while thinking about what kind of tier list I could make, the first one that came to mind was tackling the different kinds of gloves that are available on the market. One of the most intimidating aspects of starting in the world of martial arts is buying gear. Because you are brand new to the field, you have no idea what's good, what's not, what's too expensive. So I figured I would just make a video that kind of helps clear all of that up and give you my opinions on the various sparring gear that I have used. There's two things I would like to make clear as we do this tier list video. And it's that first, I am only going to be talking about gear that I have specifically used. So if there is a brand or a kind of glove that you really like that I fail to mention, I'd love to hear about the pros and cons of that particular glove down in the comments section. The second point is that I'm coming at this from a self-defense training standpoint, which means versatility is going to play a big role. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started by talking about the most common piece of sparring equipment that you can come across, which is going to be boxing gloves. So I'm going to pull up two boxing gloves here so we can kind of focus in on the difference between these two. First, let's talk about boxing gloves as they relate to self-defense, and then I'll talk about these two particular brands. When it comes to boxing gloves, what a boxing glove is, it's a full coverage glove that usually is relatively large, comes in a variety of different weights from like 12 ounce to 16 ounce to 20 ounce. It almost always will hold your thumb to the side and generally will have a permanently closed grip. They're usually very large with a lot of wrist support. The benefit of a boxing glove is the fact that they are large. And because they are large and have a lot of cushion to them, it allows you to have much harder kickboxing and sparring sessions without running the risk of injuring your opponent. Boxing gloves are also nice because they generally are really quick to put on, so they work for a like quick pickup game of sparring. And they are everywhere. You can buy a boxing glove at Walmart. You can buy a boxing gloves at Dick's Sporting Goods. You don't have to specially order a boxing glove, which is really nice. A positive side of this style of glove is because they come in a variety of weights, you can get a heavier weighted glove and kind of get a bit of very low line weight training in your punches so that you learn to punch with a little bit more weight on your hands, which then allows your muscles to develop to better control your shots. The downside of boxing gloves when it comes specifically to sparring, which would prevent a boxing glove from ever making it to the A tier, is that it really is exclusively a punching glove. Remember that when we study self-defense, we have to be prepared for stand, clinch, ground, and weapons-based training in our sparring. And with boxing glove, you're basically limited to the standing phase and a little bit of the clinch phase. Trying to get any kind of real submission with a boxing glove uh, will range from frustrating to basically impossible, depending on what submission it is. So boxing gloves are not ideal for training the full spectrum of self-defense. 
Another downside of boxing gloves is how it holds your fist. That most boxing gloves, or all boxing gloves, are going to tend to hold your thumb to the side like this, which is not the way you would hold your thumb while throwing a punch in a self-defense scenario. Now there's a lot of debate about the precise placement of your thumb amongst martial artists, but at the School of Self-Defense, what we recommend is locking the thumb over the second knuckle like this. So you can see all the angles. And as you can see from a boxing glove, a boxing glove forces you to hold your hand on the side. Um, another big downside of boxing glove, which seems like a positive side, is the fact that because they are so large, you kind of get a false sense of security. There's an entire style of boxing made famous by Mike Tyson called the peekaboo style, in which you effectively just hide behind your gloves, which isn't really an option when it comes to having your small hands. If I have a large, let me angle myself here, if I have a large boxing glove, all I have to do to protect my ear is effectively bring my glove up to the side of my face. But obviously that habit would not be a good habit to develop if you are specifically training for self-defense because obviously you just have your hands and your hand is not gonna be enough to protect your entire face. So you're gonna wanna use more of like a whole forearm action. Ultimately, boxing gloves are probably a must have in most people's sparring gear just because if you go to another boxing school or a kickboxing school or a Muay Thai school, they're going to probably want you to have specifically boxing gloves for sparring. So they're really good to have, but they do run the risk of developing some bad habits that aren't necessarily going to be effective for self-defense. Because of that, I could never really put any boxing glove on A tier as far as self-defense gear is concerned. So now let's talk about the two specific brands that we have here. Here we have an Everlast, a tried and true brand that has been in the boxing world for ages, um, probably the first glove anyone ever buys. And here we have the more high-end Hayabusa boxing glove. I do want to make one thing clear. This video is not a sponsored video, so I'm going to talk very frankly about every piece of equipment here. And also, if I talk very highly of a piece of equipment, it's because I genuinely feel that way. So let's first talk about the pros of the Everlast. So Everlast is one of the most prolific brands in boxing. There are probably hundreds of different models of the standard boxing glove from Everlast. For the vast majority of my martial arts career, I was an Everlast diehard. I would exclusively buy Everlast products because they are both affordable and durable. A lot of cheaper gloves that are around the same price point as Everlast will wear out incredibly quickly. Like one time I got kind of an off-brand boxing glove and legitimately the seams start to rip within two sparring sessions. Whereas with an Everlast, you won't experience that. Um, in particular, you wanna be shooting for the mid to high range of their products. Do not go for the absolute lowest range of the product just because you'll kind of outgrow that glove really quickly. When I'm looking for a boxing glove, one of the big things I'm looking for is full wrist coverage on the wrist wrap. So if you can see here, if I zoom in on these particular ones, you see how the wrist strap only goes halfway around the wrist. Well, when you buy this kind, the, that, that wrist strap tends to pop off a lot during more intense sparring sessions. So it's good to get that full wrist wrap. One of the biggest benefits of boxing gloves is that it helps to support your wrist so that there's less play in your wrist. So when you hit, you're less likely to injure yourself. This is very good for harder sparring sessions, um, but it does have some downsides, which we'll talk about later. Generally speaking, if you are brand new to the world of martial arts, Everlast is gonna be the best brand for you because they are both affordable and very easy to get a hold of. Like I said, you can find them just about anywhere. The downside of Everlast is that they do wear out in fairly catastrophic ways. My experience with Everlast gloves has always been that the glove itself is generally in really good shape, but the Velcro strap goes bad long before the rest of the glove does, which is very frustrating because you have an otherwise perfect glove, but this one piece has worn out on it that effectively makes it so you have to buy a new glove. I've even done ridiculous things like just started duct taping around my gloves every single time I wore them because I was so, so not willing to go buy another glove because the rest of the glove was in good shape. 
One consistent thing you'll find with Everlast gloves is that when they do start to wear out, lots of times one of the ways that they wear out is that the art on it will start to flake off and it makes a terrible mess and you end up with all these little flakes all over the place. Now having said that, all of this happens after a year to two maybe even three years worth of sparring. So it's not like you are buying a glove that isn't a good investment. It's just not going to be a lifetime glove. But as you'll see, most gloves aren't. Because the Everlast is your standard boxing glove, kind of your prototype sparring gear, I'm going to put the Everlast in C to be the measure for which we measure all the other gloves in the rest of this video. Which brings us to this other brand here, which is the Hayabusa. Now there are tons of brands of boxing gloves on the market, but in my experience, the brand that I have been most impressed with has been Hayabusa, which kind of frustrates me because they are extremely expensive gloves. And I've, I avoided this product for years just because of the price tag that usually they're two to three, if not four times more expensive than like the Everlast gloves you might find at Dick's Sporting Goods, at least in my experience or where I live. I was very convinced that they were a good glove, but that you were mostly paying for the name, which may be true. But Hayabusa eventually came out with these really beautiful Italian leather gloves that I just really, really wanted. They looked so good. And so I went ahead and bought them and was extremely impressed. They are extremely high quality, extremely durable. Um, and let's talk about some of the big positive sides of the Hayabusa's that I've gotten to train with. First is they have this double wrist strap design. So not only does it wrap around your wrist once, but it has a half wrist, let me do this, half wrist here. So you can tighten it in this direction and then wrap it around. So you get even more wrist support and a more comfortable fix. This is also a very soft and cushiony glove, which is good because it allows for some harder sparring sessions. One thing is if your glove is too dense, it basically feels like you're punching your partners. I, I was talking about some cheaper gloves that I bought a while ago and my sparring partners basically asked me to stop wearing them because even when I was just tapping, it still felt like I was hitting them hard because the glove was too dense. These Hayabusa's are cushiony and they have a nice impact and it's very easy to control how hard you're hitting with them. As far as durability, I've had mine for just about a year, but several of my students have Hayabusa's that are five or six years old and are in great shape. I don't know if this is going to be a forever glove. I don't think any glove actually is because they all eventually wear down, but ultimately it's a very, very good product. The downside of Hayabusa's is you are paying a lot of money for them. They are not cheap gloves, particularly if you're getting any of the higher ends of the Hayabusa brand, but ultimately I do think they're worth the money. So because this is a boxing glove and it's not as versatile as some of these other gloves, uh, the Hayabusa is going to go above the Everlast because it is a superior glove to the Everlast, but it's not going to make that A tier just because it's not ideal for self-defense. Both of these are awesome gloves. If you are new to martial arts, I'd probably recommend these Everlast. If you're looking to buy your second pair of boxing gloves, it's probably about time to upgrade to a higher end glove like the Hayabusa. So now we're going to talk about your three lowest price point gloves that you will find in the martial arts market. And those are going to be your karate point sparring gloves. Here we have the macho brand, your Taekwondo style gloves. And then this is going to seem odd, but I'll explain myself and a bag glove. So let's go ahead and zoom in and talk about these individually. So at first glance, all three of these gloves appear to be solving all the issues that exist in boxing gloves. Boxing gloves hold your thumb to the side. All three of these have opposable thumbs so that you can fully close your fist. Boxing gloves co cover your grip so that your grip has to stay closed. So as a result, you can't grab people. All three of these have free floating hands so that you can grab. Why would I not just get these over a boxing glove? And it's going to come to the versatility of the product and the quality of the product. So I first want to start off with the point karate gloves and point karate gloves. When you first put them on, there's like a thought that like, yeah, 
this is going to be perfect for training every aspect of self-defense that i have a floating thumb so i can make a fist my fingers are free so i can grapple but that is only an illusion because of how these gloves actually hold you in the glove uh, they don't work well for any of that let me zoom in even further so i can kind of talk about my issues that i had with these gloves if you can see here that your fingers are kept in with this sort of plastic or hard rubber railing. Now these are the Macho brand, but Century has these. They all kind of are roughly the same. And your fingers are held in with a sort of plastic railing that kind of grabs onto your finger with these loops. But it's not a fabric or a flexible thing. It's like I said, it's kind of a plastic or a hard rubber. And what I find happens is that, whereas if you just keep a fist, like you're throwing punches with boxing gloves, they stay on your hand pretty well. However, the second you start to do any kind of grappling or trapping with these, which you can do trapping with boxing gloves, but you can't do trapping with these, your fingers tend to slip out of those that little railing system. And so either the glove completely falls off or you end up with a piece of glove that kind of is like flopping on your hand like this the whole time, which obviously you're gonna have to adjust. I can't tell you how many times I've sparred with these kind of point karate gloves and my fingers would constantly slip out. And I have done the machos, I've done the centuries, um, and I've borrowed several of my friends' gloves during just like quick pickup games, and they've always been very frustrating. The other aspect of these kind of point karate gloves, and this is the true of all this kind of gear, is this elastic band wears out so quickly. Unlike the band that you'll see in something like a, a Hayabusa or an Everlast, in which these are very thick and durable pieces of either elastic or oftentimes just other kind of fabrics too to give it as much durability as possible this is tends to be a very thin wide elastic band that stretches for a mile and as a result they wear out incredibly quickly you these are also generally kind of held together with this I don't even know what it is, but this like thin plastic all around them, which gets extremely sweaty, but it's e that it, it is easy to clean. But moreover, I find that it tends to rip and then as a result, whole pieces come off. So a lot of times that railing system will rip off or the thing here where it's holding your palm, the strap across your palm will rip clean off. So Whereas these are fine if you're doing extremely light kickboxing, the second you get into any kind of mixed martial arts or weapons play or anything other than kind of point karate, they tend to fall apart. And as a result, I'm going to put these down here in the F. So comparatively or similarly to these gloves, you have the Taekwondo gloves. Now I've only borrowed these from people. I've never bought these and actually trained with them at length, but I can tell you what I remember from working with them was that they have a lot of the same issues as these point sparring gloves that my experience has been that the way it holds you if you look here it basically leaves your thumb completely free and just holds your hand almost like a mitten um, in that glove and it has this huge bulbous top which should be ideal because like I said for a good glove for some heavy sparring, it's good to have a lot of cushioning on it so that you can hit without having to worry about like breaking your partner's nose. And with all of this cushioning, that's pretty good. But what I find happens is the same thing that happens with these point gloves is that your fingers, once you actually get into grappling, start pulling out of the little mitten shape and you end up with a glove kind of flapping on your hand. The other issue that I find with these huge gloves is when they are that big and you start grappling, a lot of submissions become incredibly difficult. So for example, the Americana, also known as the Ude Garami or the Key Lock, or I've, I've heard figure four lock, bent arm lock. Anyways, this one uh, <laughs> um, involves you grabbing someone's wrist and having to slide your hand under someone's arm to your arm. And because it's so big and so bulbous, I find it quite difficult to get into that position, which once again, very frustrating. Same thing with doing like a rear naked choke. 
that if you're trying to put someone to sleep from behind, it's really hard to get that arm behind their head when your glove is so big. And unlike a boxing glove, which is gonna stay on your arm with a these Taekwondo gloves, at least my experience, is that the second you start to make that slide, it starts to pull off your hand in some way. So for the same reason, I'm gonna give these, um, or for similar reasons, I'm gonna give these an F. Okay, now let's talk about this kind of odd man here, this, this odd glove, which is a bag glove. So this glove is not intended for sparring. It's intended for you to hit a punching bag with. This particular one has a strap on it, but most bag gloves don't. Most of them are just kind of like mittens that you put on. They tend to have a free thumb, unlike boxing gloves, which will hold it to the side. And they usually have fairly flexible hands. So like I said, they're kind of like mittens. There's a lot of different kind of bag gloves out there um, with several different levels of padding. And obviously the really old fashioned leather ones that don't have any padding on the knuckles at all would not be used for sparring. And ideally you don't use these for sparring either. But having said that, I have that in between like the ages of like 12 and like 15 or 16, it was very common that if I was sparring with my friends, we would put on bag gloves because that's all we had access to. That we all had punching bags, we all had gloves to hit the bag, but maybe we didn't have a more expensive, um, you know, punching, like boxing glove. And so we'd throw these guys on and they worked well um, because your hand's not too big. You're able to do a lot of the same grappling that you would do without a glove on. And because you have the free floating thumb, it's a lot easier to grab as well. The side, the shape of the glove still kind of forces you to kind of hold that boxer's grip with a hand to the side like this. Um, but ultimately they were able to work in a pinch. Now there's an old saying where they say that D's get degrees and I feel the same way about this glove. It is not ideal at all, but you know, it will do if you need it that if I have nothing else to spar with but a bag glove, as long as it has enough padding, yeah, it, it, it will do just fine. Um, just obviously don't, you don't wanna make these your only <laughs> sparring gear. This is more of a uh, in a pinch sort of situation, but I've done it and it works. Like I said, not ideal, but hey, sometimes you wanna spar and that's all you got. All right, so this next glove was a real shocker to me, which is a Kenpo glove. So let me zoom in so we can talk a little bit more about it. So a Kenpo glove is kind of the precursor to the MMA glove, that they have full coverage over your entire hand, they cover all of your knuckles, the side of your hands, um, and really, really interestingly, they have flexible wrists. And whereas I gave a lot of props to boxing gloves for having that wrist support, Kempo gloves allow you to do more high level defenses, such as like hewn saws and things that involve you rotating your wrist, which I think is extremely valuable for your training. Uh, when I first got these gloves, I got them more as a novelty than anything. As I mentioned earlier, I became very frustrated with having the Velcro wear out on my gloves and having to replace an otherwise perfect glove. So I was looking for a glove that would work like a mixed martial arts glove, but would have laces so I wouldn't have to constantly replace the Velcro or constantly replace the glove. And these Kempo gloves worked out well. As I said, I originally got them kind of as a novelty because these are the gloves that Bruce Lee wore in the beginning of Enter the Dragon, if you guys remember that. And so I didn't expect to think that they were awesome gloves. I just thought like, hey, this will be a fun like novelty to spar with and it solves the issue of the Velcro. So let me go ahead and get them and try them out. What I was surprised about was how good of a glove they actually are for studying self-defense, which makes sense because Kenpo is a specifically self-defense art, so it makes sense that a Kenpo glove would be good for practicing self-defense. Because it has a flexible wrist, it allows you to use more nuanced defensive techniques. Because it is padded on every possible side, it allows you to use a larger variety of strikes. I'm not saying you should like hammer fist someone or ridge hand someone as hard as you can with these gloves, but you can do a hammer fist. You can do a ridge hand with these gloves without risking your opponent because they have padding all around. It even allows for some of the more obscure techniques like a panther fist if you want to use something like that because once again, you have that padding all the way around. Kind of a fun 
cheat about the gloves, I don't know if it's a benefit, but it's definitely a fun cheat, is because the palm of the glove has kind of this canvas on it, it kind of eliminates the sweat of your opponent. So if you've ever been sparring with someone and you go to grapple and because they're so sweaty, they can just pull right out, that does not happen with these gloves because that canvas just holds on tight and gives you a great grip, which maybe isn't always realistic, but it definitely increases the enjoyment because you get to keep fighting somebody even though they're covered in sweat. Uh, and then another aspect of this glove that really surprised me was, and I didn't even think about until we started playing with them, is because they have full hand coverage and full flexibility in the fingers, you can do weapons training with these. So a lot of times we'll get the trainer knives or uh, rattan sticks, and we will spar with these on so that the person can actually hit your hand and you don't really risk too much damage to your hand. Uh, it makes weapons-based sparring far more viable and allow you to do weapons-based sparring with a lot more intensity. Keeping in mind the fact that when we spar with weapons, the primary goal is to strike the hand of the person holding the weapon with your weapon. We call this defanging the snake, and I have a lot of videos on that in our seminar series. Oh, and then also, I've had these gloves for years now, three, probably about three years maybe, two or three years, and uh, they're in great shape. Um, nothing is falling off of them. The padding has stayed thick, so I can still you know, spar fairly hard. And most importantly, because there is no Velcro, I've not had to replace them just because the Velcro has gone bad. What are the downsides of this glove? Well, it kind of comes down to two things. First is that they're big. It's like your hands got stung by a bee. So generally speaking, you can still hold a proper fist, but the issues that I've complained about how difficult it is to grapple with large gloves on, these issues exist here. They're better than boxing gloves because you have freedom to move all your fingers, which allows for more nuanced styles of grips. But how I was talking about trying to get like an Americana on somebody and slide your hand underneath, same issue goes with these, that like it's just this huge glove that you're trying to shove under their arm. Or you're trying to put someone in a rear naked choke, same sort of thing, try and get that glove behind their head. Your hands are huge. Uh, because they are big, you also may run the risk of using them as uh, kind of a unnecessary shield or an unrealistic shield. Although I find that uh, it's harder to do that with these than it is with boxing gloves because they, because since they're so flexible, they're less dense. And so you really kind of can't just eat blows on these the way that you can a boxing glove. The second issue with these gloves is the fact that they are lace up. So the very thing that I like about them is also frustrating about them because generally speaking, it's very hard to lace yourself into your own gloves because you tend to need to tie knots with both hands and not just one. However, I was able to remedy this situation with a modification. Have you ever seen those shoelace straps where you can kind of pinch a button and pull the shoelace tight? I actually replaced the laces on this with that style shoelace. And so I can actually just grab it and lay and tighten it up by pulling on it. And so far that has stood the test of time. It's worked really, really well. But as it come out of the box, you'll probably need someone to tie you in each time you spar or you're going to uh, want to replace those laces with something that's easier for you to lace up yourself. So the downsides for these gloves do not get close to outweighing the positive sides of these gloves. Because these gloves allow me to do stand, clinch, ground, and weapons-based training, I'm going to put these in the A. And like I said, if that shocks you, uh, that surprised me as well because I did not expect to like the gloves as much as I did. I was just buying them because I was a Bruce Lee fan. But ultimately, these work really well. I highly recommend them. I would just recommend that when you buy them, buy replacement um, laces so that you can lace them up yourself. Okay, so next glove that we're gonna talk about is a classic MMA glove. In many ways, the evolution of the Kempo glove is to go to an MMA glove. An MMA glove leaves all your fingers free. It leaves your thumb free so you can make a proper fist. It doesn't make your fist too large so that you aren't able to hide behind an unnecessarily large shield. And uh, they generally allow for the greatest variety of techniques. Having said that, I don't think of these as good sparring gloves. 
because the padding is so thin, you run a much larger risk of causing some more serious injuries to your sparring partners. Don't get me wrong, like sparring is going to get you hurt, but we really want to avoid like breaking people's noses or, or breaking someone's orbital bone. We want to avoid those kind of incidences. And the way we do that is with a thicker, softer glove so that the impact is dissipated over a larger surface area. Ultimately, these are only going to be for very light, light, light sparring or to compete with. And because of that, even though they seem very versatile, I'm going to put them way down here in the F because I just don't think of them as sparring gloves. This is better for competition when you want your punches to hurt your opponent. One thing to remember with sparring is that the goal is not to hurt your opponent, but rather to show your opponent you could have hurt them. We are only actively trying to hurt someone if we are competing or obviously if we are practicing self-defense. Now, this glove would be more necessary if it wasn't for this last brand of glove or last style of glove, which would be the hybrid glove. So a hybrid glove is a glove that has the MMA style, so you full closed grip and small profile, but has a lot of padding on top so that um, you, know, you can hit a little harder. Unlike a point sparring glove where the railing system for your fingers is very kind of stiff and rigid, this is a fabric finger holes that grip your hand really, really well. These gloves never fall off of your hands. Here we have three different brands of hybrid gloves that I have personally used a lot. So we have the Combat Sports, the Everlast, and of course, finally, the Hayabusa. And of the gloves on this list, the hybrid gloves are going to be the most versatile as far as the striking and grappling arts are concerned. They have literally all of the positive side of an MMA glove, but they have sufficient padding so that we can minimize the amount of injury to our sparring partners uh, while playing with each other. Because the glove is not too large, it also solves a lot of the issues we see with like a uh, Kempo glove where submissions are a lot more viable with these style of gloves. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to get into kind of the nuances of these, but generally speaking, the best glove for sparring self-defense is probably gonna be some version of a hybrid glove. So let me talk about each one of these brands individually and kind of my experiences with them. So first I'm gonna start off with the Combat Sport Glove. This is one of the lower end gloves, at least if my memory serves, um, one of the more affordable gloves. I'll start off by saying all three of these gloves would be great to purchase. What I really liked about this glove was the fact that it has this like curved shape to the hand, which once again makes for easier submissions so that it kind of slides in between spaces a lot easier because it kind of has a built-in wedging system to it. Unlike the Everlast where it has kind of this shelf, I don't know if you can see that, but it has this little shelf to the pad, this curved part of the glove allows for a lot easier uh, maneuverability when it comes to being in the clinch. At least that's been my experience. One thing I will say about the Combat Sport Glove is that um, the ones that I had were awfully dense. They weren't dangerously so, but both of these, the Everlast and the Hayabusa Glove, they hit a lot softer, which once again allows for a little bit more contact, a little bit more realistic training, um, and minimizing the amount of injury on your partner. With this glove, um, what ended up going bad with the glove was the Velcro. Um, when I was talking about duct taping a glove closed, I believe it was this exact brand that I ended up duct taping the glove closed because the rest of the glove was in great shape, but this uh, Velcro fell apart like way too quick. Generally speaking, if, I, if you were to be new to the world of self-defense, I would probably recommend you getting these Everlast hybrid gloves instead. I don't think they call them hybrid gloves. I think they call them like grappling trainers or something. And they have a lot of gloves in Everlast that look like this, but you wanna make sure you get one with that like solid inch, inch and a half of padding. Cause once again, we wanna disperse the impact so we can keep our partner safe. 
Um, my experience with these gloves is that they are great. They tended to last me about a year, year and a half, maybe two years. Um, but just like how I talked about with these Everlast, how I said that that Velcro gave out, that was the first thing it gave out on this glove as well. But these gloves also do this thing that I think this Everlast does as well, where the art starts to tear off of it. And as so like all of this black is actually kind of a thin, almost like a rubber-like layer over the actual padding. And as that starts to tear, it just creates these flakes all over the place and it makes a tremendous mess, which is extremely frustrating. These gloves also do this thing, um, which I found frustrating, <laughs> um, where they kind of would hold my pinky high like this. So if you look at the way I hold a fist, I'm generally hitting with my first two knuckles here. So you see the pinky is held a lot lower than the other two knuckles. But if you look at this glove, you'll see that all four of the finger holes are on the exact same plane. And so as a result, the glove kind of forces you to hold your pinky in this really high up position like this and that doesn't seem like it's a huge issue but i've caught myself like working the bag no glove and holding my pinky high out of habit from you know hundreds of hours of sparring with these gloves on and so they it was kind of interesting that I developed this weird bad habit of popping my pinky up but because the padding is a lot softer than these combat sports gloves and they're otherwise the same, I do think it's a superior glove. I will say that this little shelf here, that the way instead of it rounding at the bottom, it creates a little shelf of padding. It, do, it did make certain aspect of grappling a little bit more difficult and it made for a higher chance of me accidentally hitting with the wrong part of my hand. That is obviously a, uh, technique issue first if I hit with the wrong part of my hand but ultimately that does happen while sparring and because the shelf doesn't kind of cover all the way around my fingers but only really covers like from here it's kind of easy it very it's very easy for the glove to kind of shift in a way in your hand that you accidentally hit with the wrong part of your hand but overall they're really good gloves um, they're very affordable um, generally I, I'm not gonna name prices because prices change all the time but Generally speaking, they are going to be one of the more affordable gloves you can get. If you, have, if you are brand new to the world of martial arts and, and you can only buy one pair of gloves, I'd probably recommend these Everlast. Um, and then uh, when you're ready to upgrade is when you'd move to the last thing we're talking about, which is the hybrid Hayabusa. These Hayabusa hybrid gloves have all the positive sides of these Everlast, but basically none of the downsides. Because they have that curved design to the hand, it gives you a little bit more hand coverage and it's easier to wedge your hand through small places for grappling. Because it has the free thumb and free fingers, it allows for trapping techniques and various kinds of grappling techniques to be done with ease. And they have a sufficient amount of padding on top to make for a nice soft hit so that you aren't damaging your opponent. In particular, these are their fancy Italian leather glove, their more high-end glove, and I can't tell you, it, it is so soft, it's, it's lovely, it's lovely. And, uh, and that's something I look for, as I've stressed a lot, that when we spar, we're not trying to hurt our opponents, we are trying to show our opponent that we could have hurt them. That's the difference when you're sparring versus fighting. And so a glove that doesn't destroy your opponent on impact is always a good idea, and these definitely fit the bill. Plus, these have that double wrist strap system that the boxing gloves down here have, where you have one that strips, just goes down the middle of your wrist, and one that goes around the whole wrist, which once again makes for a nice, tight fit. The hands aren't too large, so you don't get a false sense of security. You actually have to block appropriately for self-defense. Generally speaking, I love this glove. The only real downside of this glove, which isn't really much of a downside, is that you're basically stuck to punching straight on punches and back fist because with like unlike with a Kempo gloves that would allow for a hammer fist or a ridge hand, um, these only have padding on the front and the back of your fist, not on either side. These also are not going to be as ideal for weapon space sparring like these will be as well, as well as they have that 
deeper wrist control, which is going to um, kind of restrict some of your movement, but not as much as a boxing glove does. So generally, I, any kind of like Wing Chun technique, I can still do with this glove really easily. I can just do it a little easier with these ones. Um, so generally speaking, both these gloves are great. Um, they both are very similarly priced, so it just kind of depends on which one you want. If I had like gun to my head, which one I like better, I think I like these Hayabusa's better than the Kempo gloves, but it's so close. Uh, my opinion may be different depending on what day of the week it is. So let's zoom out, look at where our tier list is and kind of get final thoughts. So here we have my final tier list for sparring gear. Honestly, anything from the C tier up is a good set of sparring gear. Like I said, we're using that classic Everlast as kind of a middle ground, as the measuring stick to which we measure all other things up to. And both the Everlast boxing glove as well as the combat sports hybrid glove are both awesome gloves if you are just brand spanking new to the world of martial arts and you're not willing to pour a million dollars into your training gear, um, you know, this C tier is going to be great. But if we are looking for the top tier, the best of the best that allows you the most versatility in training where you're working stand, clinch, ground, and weapons-based training, we're going to be looking at the Hayabusa hybrid glove, specifically this Italian leather version and or the Kempo glove with the laces because they last long and they have a lot of versatility as well. Wow, so as per usual, that was a relatively long video. So you're still watching this video, which means you enjoy this content. So if you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? Hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell button because you clearly enjoy this content. So you gotta let me know if you want more of it. Oftentimes people will comment on my videos having not watched the entire thing. So to let me know you made it all the way to the end, include the word smiley face somewhere in your comment and then you and I will know. If you live in the Indianapolis area and you'd like to come train self-defense with me, all the information you need to get started is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. And if you live too far away to train with me in person, we do have Zoom classes, both group classes and private lessons available. Once again, information about that is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.